everyone. I'm Kim Oakland. Thank you so much for tuning in to hear me talk about my debut novel, Man Up. I'm not sure if it looks reversed to you or not, but you get the idea of what the cover looks like. Um, I started writing this book unknowingly 10 years ago, and here we are 10 years later with a launch. Um, in every sense of the sentence, I would not be here talking to you if it was not for the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, or SCBWI, uh, an acronym that's kind of hard to say, but is so helpful to me and countless other writers around the country. Um, I met my agent through SCBWI. I met my critique group through SCBWI. I met my publisher slash editor slash cover designer <laughs> through SCBWI. Um, so I'm gonna tell you how I found SCBWI first. Um, I had written, I'd written about 30 pages of this, of Man Up, the book that's coming out today. And I, I just wanted to know that I wasn't wasting my time. I'd written by myself, I hadn't shown it to anybody. And that's part of writing, you write it by yourself, but then you need to get feedback on that. Um, so I started to Google very random, vague phrases, writing groups, writer meetups, read my pages, whatever. I forgot the exact words. And I found writing groups that met in Chicago. And I lived in Gurney, uh, Gurney, Illinois, which is by Great America, about 10 minutes from the Wisconsin border for anyone who needs help with the geography. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't impossible for me to go down to go downtown once a month. It's something I do quite often now, but I had a, a young daughter at home. She was about a year old and I really wanted something a bit more local. So I did some more Googling and somehow, I don't know why it took so long, I stumbled upon the website for SCBWI and it stood out to me because they had a group that met in the far Northern suburbs and that's where I lived. Um, but then I wasn't sure if SCBWI was for me because I was reading some of the information about it and I read that Judy Bloom was a part of it and I didn't know if they let everybody in. Like if it was more, you had to like be more experienced or more known to be a part of this society that I just learned about. So I sent an email to the president who I didn't know was the president of the time and asked him if SCBWI was a place for me and he assured me that yes. It is a place for everybody. And I have learned that so many times over the past six years. I think my first meeting was six years ago exactly. I was pregnant with my son and his birthday is July 2nd. And I remember it being the April meeting because he was gonna come in the next couple months. Um, so I went to my first meeting of the far Northern suburbs with five and a half pages, the first five and a half pages of Man Up and I just hoped these people would tell me that I should keep going. And they did. And they told me that they, they were engaged in the first five and a half pages and they wanted to know more and they wanted to read more. And um, the network representative, Tina, came up to me afterwards and said, I really want to read more. Um, and I was like, great, I'm going to keep writing, I'm going to do this. And when I was done with it, um, she read, she read it, she liked the whole thing. And she said that she would like to offer me representation because she would like to sell this book. And I did not go into this thinking that this group would lead to an agent, um, let alone a publisher, because um, the other person who was at a meeting for the first time as I, that I was on that fateful day in April, six years ago, was a woman named Erica who wrote, uh, who self-published several picture books. And over the course of our time at SCBWI together, she actually founded a very small press called Trism Books. That's with a T, not Prism, Trism. Um, she founded Trism Books. And um, about a year and a half ago, she said that she would like to put Man Up out into the world. She believes in the story and she believes that there is a place for good story on bookshelves and in libraries. And I did not foresee that coming. Um, so because of this group, I am here talking to you today. And I'm also here talking to you today through the, um, the kindness of Esther and Alice and Deb, who knew that there were other authors in my position who are supposed to be at this very exciting time celebrating their debuts or books that might not be a debut. And um, 
you know, all of our book events were canceled. That was supposed to be at the Young Adult Book Festival in Chicago right now. But instead, I'm talking to you, which is great. Um, and so they said, we want to help you. And that's what SCBWI has done for me since the beginning. Um, they've helped me find a place to share my writing. They've helped me find people to improve my writing and then help me share my writing with so many others. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about David, the main character in Man Up. He is a high school senior, a baseball star. He's the fastest one on his team. He plays second base, uh, but he's also gay and he's hoping to get through his senior year with no one really finding that out. It's just easier that way. Um, he has a boyfriend who supports that secrecy and he has supportive parents um, as well. David was born 10 years ago in a playwriting class uh, that I was taking for an MFA program at Roosevelt. The teacher said, write a monologue. That's how he taught us to write dialogue, write a monologue. And somehow I wrote this monologue about this um, baseball player who was wrestling with all these feelings inside of him. And the monologue tur turned into a dialogue. And then he got his own short story, which became, a uh, which became part of a collection of short stories for my thesis project at Roosevelt. Um, you probably will never see that collection of short stories, but David was in there. Um, and now he has his own book. So he's definitely had his own journey as well. Um, I would love to read you um, a couple pages from the very beginning of the book. I was going to read a part from when the conflict kind of starts, but you know what? There's enough conflict going on right now and negativity. Let's read something happy. Um, so the book starts out with uh, David coming out to his dad and him and his dad kind of avoid each other for a few days. Um, his dad works during the day. David works at night. They manage to avoid each other for a few days. And he comes home from his job umping Little League games and his dad is waiting on the porch for him. So let me share that exchange with you. Okay, so they've been avoiding each other for three days. Here we go. On the third day, I came home to find dad sitting on the front steps, wearing his reliable after work uniform, shorts and an old White Sox t-shirt from their unbelievable World Series run in 2005. I turned off the car, forgetting to put it in park. It heaved forward like it was about to throw up, reminding me to put it in gear. I had, my dad continued to sit, elbows resting on his knees, like he was still waiting for me to come home. My hand froze on the door handle. Maybe he wasn't even going to let me back in the house. When I finally got out of the car, we didn't say anything to one another for a few moments. I just stood there, slightly off to the side of the porch, aware of the mosquitoes swarming around my legs. Dad leaned forward to put his elbows on his knees. He looked at the weeds growing through a crack in the pavement. When I told your mom what you told me, she was relieved. I wrinkled my eyebrows, asking a question without having to say anything. She said that with the way I was acting, she thought I was going to tell her you were sick or something like you had cancer. Dad spoke slowly, still avoiding eye contact. Now he focused on setting his beer on a ring of condensation that was already on the porch. I'm not sick, I said, feeling like I had to peel the words from my mouth. Are you still going to play ball in the spring? Dad finally looked up at me with one eye. Yeah, I said, surprised by the question. Why wouldn't I? The summer night drone of insects and birds got louder and louder. Dad picked up his beer and moved over so he sat on the ring of condensation. He gestured for me to sit down next to him with his eyes. Baseball was a good subject for us. I sat down. I didn't know if you would want to or if you had some other plans, Dad shrugged. You know, because you're gay? Dad needed me to finish the sentence, but not because he hated me. How long had it taken me to say a little three-letter word? I could see him hearing the word and absorbing it. I put a hand on my dad's sweaty shoulder. I'll always play baseball, Dad. Being gay has nothing to do with it. The outline of his head nodded in the orange glow of the lights on the front of the house. I don't know how this works, David. He patted my grass-stained knee. Me either. It was true. I had no idea. But for now, I didn't have to. So we just sat on the porch together, my dad with his beer and me with a sports drink, until the mosquitoes threatened to eat us alive, and my mom called us inside. And then the story starts, and you see uh, how David's senior year unfolds with the support of his uh, boyfriend and his parents when things don't really go as he planned. 
Um, so if you're interested, I would love it if you could check out um, Man Up. And next week, you can tune into the SCBWI book, virtual book launch parties again and hear from Car Carla Valenti. She has a book coming out about Marie Curie, Marie Curie and the Power of Persistence. I'm very excited about this one because my kids and I just got into PBS's show Xavier Riddle and there was a Marie Curie episode. And so now they know who she is. I know a little bit more about her. And now we can learn a little bit more about her um, with the help of Carla. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you very much for listening and be well and stay healthy.